Hello and welcome to 2020 Stuckness Community College Day. My name is Katerina Porodyuk and I'm honored to serve the Stuckness community as the student Restless. programs manager. To kick off things, um, today I want to give a special welcome to our first time attendees to Stuckness. SACNAS is an inclusive organization dedicated to achieving true diversity in STEM, where the field reflects the demographics of our country's population. As the nation's largest multicultural and multidisciplinary STEM diversity organization, SACNAS creates space where all members, partners, and staff feel they belong and can embrace and celebrate their intersectional identities. After today, I hope each of you will join us as an official member. I'm so happy to see you all here today. Please introduce yourself in the chat, share your name and the institution you're attending. You are encouraged to use social media to share your fa favorite moments throughout the event and use our official hashtag, um, hashtag CCDay2021. Today is about discovery. Sackness Community College Day is meant for you to discover degrees and careers in STEM, as well as the tools and networks of support you will need to get to you where you want to go. Here at Sackness, you are now in a national setting. Over the next few days, you're going to virtually meet fellow students and mentors from across the country. There are like-minded people who have similar obstacles and goals. I strongly encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity to share your dreams, your challenges, and your advice during the workshops, networking sessions, and in the chat feature. This event is full of people who may currently be where you are and can relate to your experiences or they may have been where you are in the past and can offer you advice for the future. This is an opportunity to discover what's possible, expand your support network and grow together. So let's get started. Now, I would like to introduce SACNA's Executive Director, Dr. Stefania Herrera. Dr. Herrera brings more than 25 years of strategic business development experience in nonprofits and membership organizations, as well as a lifetime of experience and passion for education and leadership development. Dr. Herrera holds, holds a bachelor's degree in international business management, an MBA in market strategy from Regis University, and a doctorate in business administration. So please help me. Welcome, SACNAS Executive Director. And I will stop sharing the screen. Great. Thank you for the introduction, Katarina. I am so excited to be here for many different reasons. And as I talk, you'll understand why. But on behalf of SACNAS, I would like to welcome you to the 2021 SACNAS Community College Day. This is our second annual virtual community college and there aren't any other organizations that I know of across the nation that put this together and that is really truly invested in all of you, our students and the community colleges. So we are so glad you could join us today. We hope you find this time valuable, get inspired by role models because we have a lot of them here. So that's good, get to know them and gain skills to continue your academic career and make community connections. I'd like to start by thanking all the attendees and joining, you know, thank you for joining us and give a warm thank you to our keynote speaker, Dr. Paloma Vargas, as well as other session speakers, panelists, and of course our staff for bringing this event to you today. So we have over 330 people registered and joining us live. We have another 330 people who registered and will receive this recording once we're finished. So we are grateful to have you here today with us. So many of you are joining us for the first time today and we welcome you to our Sockness Familia, part of our family. So once you've attended, you're part of the family. So we'd love to have you register as members and also become part of our chapters. But also I am here to 
be of service to you. So if you have questions, comments, whatever I can do to help, I'm here. I'm here. Our staff is here for you. And please, you know, be a part of us for programming. But now I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. And Katarina just found this out, is that I am a product of a community college. I did not necessarily graduate. That's a topic for another session. But I did follow through and I have three college degrees. So I'm first generation college student, went to community college, did not have a mentor or somebody to show me how to go, where to go, how to get there, how to find funding. So throughout my lifetime, I had to figure it out myself. But two things that I always remember is that I look for a mentor and sometimes I was able to find one, sometimes I, was, it, I wasn't able to find one. So it's good to reach out and to ask for help and to find like-minded people for you. So I've been, I'm so, I can't, I'm just <laughs> so passionate about what we do and so excited to be here. But just to let you know too, that I have been through the United States. I've ran some organizations that were international, worked with presidents. I will be back based in Washington, DC. So I'm there as an advocate for education and for what we can do and representing our SOCTIS members, representing you. So if there's anything else we can do to help, we are here. And I just want to leave you with a couple words of wisdom, what I learned through my life that will hopefully make yours easier is number one, and these are asks as well. Always be a lifelong learner. Keep learning, keep growing as long as you can. The other part is be proud of where you came from. A lot of people say, don't forget where you came from, but I say be proud of where you came from. The roots make us stronger. We have that solid foundation that will project us forward and then always share the knowledge because I have a lot of knowledge in many different areas. And if I can't share it, it doesn't mean anything to me. But my last ask of you, well, actually there's two, is number one, I want you to pull other people up, educate, be out there, be an advocate for yourself and for other people. But the other one is just please join us and be part of the family. We are here to help you and keep pulling people up so we can do it. But can you imagine all of us as a whole, as a community working to help other people as well? So I hope you enjoy today and tomorrow I'll be popping in and out to be part of this wonderful day. So thank you, Katarina. I appreciate it. Thank you all of you, all of you for joining. Just, I'm so excited to be here. Love community colleges and always will. It's a part of me. So take care and have fun and learn all you can. Thank you so much, Dr. Guerrero. So let's go to our next speaker. Uh, now I'd like to introduce the chair of Sackness Community College Task Force. I have the pleasure to work closely with Dr. Nicole Traeger. Dr. Nicole Traeger holds a BS in biochemistry and a PhD in immunology. Currently, she serves as the director of mathematics, engineering, science, achievements, MESA program at Plus Medanios Community College, working with STEM students to transfer and obtain a four year degree. She is a proud first generation college graduate and Mexican American. Dr. Nicole Trigger. Hi, thank you. And thank you for welcoming me. And that was totally me yelling at my husband to come grab my dog right as we were starting. Um, and that's the environment we live in. And Dr. Vargas is just logging on because she lacked power at her house. And I'm sure you're all experiencing things at home, um, kids running around and dogs barking and the uh, landscapers are also outside my house earlier today, so we are so glad that you are here with us and taking time and experiencing community uh, today with us uh, over the unimaginable hurdles uh, that you've been going through in the past year and almost year and a half, uh, and we are so glad to be presenting uh, Sackness Community College Day 2021 to you. Uh, I would like to get started with a land acknowledgement. Uh, as we gather here for this meeting, uh, we are physically dispersed, but we are virtually together. And I want to take a moment to reflect on the meeting of place and doing so to recognize 
uh, the various traditional lands on which we are congregated today. I am here in Northern California, and I am on the land of the Bay Miwoks, and we want to acknowledge the elders past, present, and emerging of all the land that we work, live, and uh, we want to acknowledge it with gratitude and respect. Uh, if you want to research the native territory lands, and I encourage you to, uh, that you live and work on near you, you can do so at native-land.ca. So we... Um, we want to bring you Community College Day, and we've been doing so over the past couple years. But the intention of a Community College Day is really threefold: is to bring, build uh, with in community uh, college students, uh, community college STEM student in mind. Uh, we really want to bring that community feeling uh, to you as a community college student and think of you specifically. We want to bring motivation and success tools to you um, as you go through your path and also professional and career insights. Um, as you, you are a student, you are uh, thinking about where you're going and we want to help you get there. And that's really what we are here um, to do. And in order to do that, we um, have built a task force of some wonderful, strong Latinas. Um, I have been the chair over the over a little bit over a year. And as mentioned before, I work here in Northern California. I work at Los Medanos College. Um, and I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background about all these wonderful women that's been working uh, to build uh, this community college programming, not only for Community College Day, but also um, in SACNAS as well. Um, one of my uh, loves to do is bake and create, but also I wanna mention in this past year, I was uh, one of the original um, Pfizer trial um, people in the vaccine. So I got my vaccine way back in August um, and I was on the clinical trial um, and still am, it's a two year. So that's something unique about me. I love science and um, love participating in it in all different avenues. Uh, Yannette uh, Padilla, is also is a STEM uh, program director at Cypress College. And uh, she really has a passion for helping STEM students and uh, attain their academic goals. And she really enjoys learning about different cultures and food tasting and traveling. And she really hopes to get back to traveling very soon. Uh, Shannon, Dr. R Rivera, uh, is in Washington State, and she plays the viola, and originally wanted to attend uh, college uh, as a mu music performance uh, major before she changed her mind and majored in chemistry, uh, so she's at uh, community college there working uh, in Washington State, and Dr. Maria Mercedes Franco is in uh, New York State. Uh, so we're really spread out through the country here. And she is a professor there in math and computer science. And she's fascinated by people's stories and uh, have incorporated uh, their personal narrative into a memoir. Um, and she uh, has done a, a Her Story Writers Workshop. So she's really fascinated 
by people's stories and is creative in that way. Uh, so lots of fabulous Latinas that are working to bring the community college experience to you throughout the country on this task force. So with that, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an agenda overview uh, for today, uh, for Friday. Uh, we just heard from our SACNIS Executive Director, and you're hearing the Agenda or Degree Review from myself. And then we're going to hear from a wonderful keynote, uh, Dr. Paloma Vargas. Uh, and then we're going to get into some concurrent workshops. You'll have your choice between three amazing workshops um, that hopefully you had a chance to look at and you really have pinpointed which one you want to go to. We have why wait, the benefits of getting involved in research. We have the power of being a mentee, all about getting mentored and keywords for success, uh, resume tips from NASA. Uh, and then we'll um, have a short networking session where you can get together and network with each other as well as some professionals. Then we'll have another set of workshops, um, advice from graduate students who transferred. So we have graduate students from um, UC, University of California, Berkeley, who were previous community college students. So they had advice about what it's like to be a graduate student now. Um, conversations with STEM professionals um, who work in uh, NOAA and uh, community college internship opportunities. And then at the end of the day, we have a wonderful panel of speakers that you don't wanna miss. Uh, so it's a jam packed day, um, all about opportunity and learning about your trajectory. Uh, so you don't wanna miss any of those things and hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. So with that, I really, I'm excited to announce our keynote speaker, Dr. Paloma Vargas. I met Dr. Vargas, oh gosh, it's been about five years now. We met in Washington, D.C., um, and I met this Spitfire who dressed super snappy, and I saw her from across the room, and I was like, I have to know that person. Um, and as I got to know Dr. Vargas, she was a staunch advocate for community colleges and she has attended, uh, she started her career at a community college in Texas. And she really has a great life story, which she will get into about. And she now um, has come to work and be an advocate um, for Hispanic serving institutions here in California. And um, she is really has a great story of what it's like to be um, a daughter of immigrants and going to community college um, on the border in Texas and making your way through graduate school um, in the sciences. And I'm really excited to have um, our keynote speaker, Dr. Paloma Vargas. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Traeger. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here for a variety of different reasons. I'm going to try sharing my slides here in a second, but um, SACNAS has been a home for me uh, since way back in 2003. Um, I know some of you on the call might be uh, students that were born on or around those dates and are probably thinking 2003 was a long time ago. Um, and it was, 2003 was, was a, a while ago and SACNAS has um, shifted in some really phenomenal ways. Uh, SACNAS has also grown tremendously since then. And so it's, it's a true pleasure um, to be here with all of you, to speak with you and um, to share my story and hopefully share um, some lessons that I've learned throughout the time uh, that I've had navigating um, the academic landscape and, and navigating research. And so um, again, a big shout out to SACNAS, to Dr. Traeger, to the uh, committee 
for um, allowing me to be here with you. And, and I'm going to hopefully lead you through um, some good points of conversation for you to, to move on through throughout the day. So uh, my, my talk is titled Learning Through Research, Life Lessons from a Latinx Biologist. Um, like I said, I'm Dr. Paloma Vargas. Uh, and my pronouns are she, her, and ella. And so welcome everybody. I hope um, that you get uh, as much as I have from SACNAS um, throughout your time here. And I hope that for those of you that is uh, where this is your first time at SACNAS in any capacity, that this is the beginning of a beautiful journey uh, that you'll be with uh, this organization um, that has truly changed my life uh, for the better in my opinion and I'll hopefully share some of that with you. So before we start, I know Dr. Trigger already did this, but I am currently in my office. Dr. Trigger mentioned that I had a power outage at my apartment building. So I literally drove uh, just barely above the legal limit uh, to try to get to you uh, as quickly as possible. And I'm at California Lutheran University, which resides on the lands that are stewarded by the Shumash Fernandinho Tatevium and the Mukawama uh, Olene people. Uh, for more information about these wonderful communities that still exist here in the Ventura County region, please visit uh, the information below or the websites below. Um, it is a wonderful area to be part of um, and to learn of and from our indigenous communities and the ways that they've stewarded these lands. Um, so, I want to start by telling you where I'm from. Um, this is uh, El Paso, Texas. I grew up on the border. Um, and what you see here is a vibrant, uh, beautiful community that is uh, binational, bicultural, um, multilingual, uh, and, and actually multicultural as well, that um, really has shaped in so many ways who I am as a human being and the things that I value and advocate for. Uh, El Paso is literally on the border. In fact, uh, half of what you see in this picture is Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, Chihuahua. Somos del Norte, we're from the North. Uh, and uh, this is a place that has uh, shaped every single bit of my being. Um, I was raised here in El Paso by my beautiful family. These are my parents and this is something that I always um, say in my talks um, because, uh, and I always highlight them because my parents are the reason that I am here. Their sacrifices and their journey across Ciudad Juarez and into the US are what brought me here. Um, my parents are Rosa and Ruben uh, Vargas and um, I, I show this picture specifically because uh, my parents uh, were raised in very low socioeconomic status and my mom was never able to have a quinceañera. So after uh, she decided to retire early um, due to a, bout, um, a battle with, with breast cancer, um, she decided to throw herself the biggest retirement party she could possibly think of. Um, and she was dressed in white. And so we joked for months that this was her quinceañera. Um, and these are the people that uh, really have instilled the values and morals and um, the um, really the, the lucha, the fight and the motivation for me to keep moving forward. Um, my mom uh, relapsed and is still a cancer patient to this day, uh, but this was, uh, it looks like she's drinking wine. She actually doesn't drink. So this was actually, um, it was soda in that glass. Um, but my parents always instilled in me a really deep sense of uh, gratitude and also uh, pushed me and my sister who is pictured here in red um, to go to school. That was the number one thing. That was what we got rewarded for. That was what, you know, we got in trouble because of, we were actually pretty decent kids. So if we got good grades, it was, you know, uh, a trip or, or a, a visit to 
uh, maybe a local fast food chain or uh, if we both did well in school that uh, nine week uh, period, you know, we would get pizza at the end of it. And it was their struggle and their work that really uh, led both my sister and I to pursue um, degrees in higher education. I will say that my mom does have a, a bachelor's in business administration from the University of Texas, El Paso. And my dad at the age of 50 went back and received his associates because, uh, and I'll quote him here, uh, he couldn't be the only one in the house without a degree. Uh, my sister has a bachelor's um, in photography and also just received her MBA uh, within the last couple of years, also from the University of Texas El Paso. So we're proud UTEP alum. And we're also very proud El Paso Community College alum. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey. Um, and what I wanted to show here is that um, my journey has not been linear and it looked a little bit more like this overlapping highway that you see here today. Um, but before I take you into what I want to address um, and I, I want to address what you'll hear throughout the day. Um, today, you're gonna hear a variety of people giving you suggestions on steps to take and moves to make and directions to follow. Um, and I wanna encourage you as much as possible um, to learn from these conversations and to take as much as you can from those conversations without losing who you are and all of the amazing ventajas, which I'll uh, talk about here in a second, um, your lived experiences and the experiences that your loved ones have instilled in you to be successful. Now, what is a ventaja? Well, these two rock stars from the field of education, Tara Yoso and Laura Rendon, define ventajas as the cultural wealth and experiential ways of knowing that students employ to transcend and excel in education. These assets are strengths, uh, are, uh, these are assets that are strengths that are uh, acquired through lived experiences, culture traditions, uh, life challenges uh, and, and life challenges which help them become survivors and move past hurdles. Now we hear a lot about resilience um, in our field and we hear a lot about folks talking about uh, Latinx and BIPOC students being resilient, but resiliency comes from struggle. Um, what you all have as students of community colleges, at, as faculty and staff of community colleges, are ventajas or assets. Um, this is an asset-based method of thinking where we acknowledge that that motivation that I mentioned earlier that my parents have instilled in me, uh, the linguistic values, que puedo cambiar de una lengua a la otra, that I can change from one language to the next, that social capital that your family has built into you, where you have your tios and your tias and your uncles and your aunties, all available to you to support you, um, and your chosen family as well, whether it be your friends or neighbors or folks that you have just met who are gonna be part of that um, structure that help you navigate uh, the world and navigate education and can become your familia. Now, one of the biggest things that I love about SACNAS is that sense of familia, that sense of familia where you get to rely on others um, and that those folks will help you through your journey. Um, and throughout this space, you'll have champions and advocates and mentors that'll help you use your ventajas, those assets that you come with uh, to help you keep going. So let's talk about uh, my experience here at El Paso Community College. This is the Valle Verde campus of El Paso Community College. Um, when I started my journey, I knew from day one that I wanted to major in biology. Uh, my dad had dreams of attending medical school and I wanted to follow those dreams. I'm a proud alumna of El Paso Community College. And I know that my journey would be very different if I had not started there. At El Paso Community College, I was able to meet my first mentor, which I'll talk about here in a second, um, and was able to participate in a program called Bridges to the Baccalaureate, um, a summer research program aimed at getting more uh, students from minoritized backgrounds into the four-year institution via research. Later today, you'll hear from graduate students, faculty members, and other professionals about the importance of conducting research and the importance of mentoring. To stay in line with this theme, 
I'd like to share how both of these have uh, helped me throughout the way. I started off at community college knowing that I wanted to major in biology, but I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. At first, I wanted to go to medical school, and then I wanted to go to nursing, and then I realized that I don't really like touching people when they're sick, and I don't like being around people when they're sick either. So I had some decisions to make, and it was this individual, um, Nick Lanuti, who was my first ever professor at community college, um, that came through for me. Um, you'll have mentors and advocates that'll come in at different times of your life. And these may be people that you least expect. Nick was my mentor, my friend and my advocate. And I apologize ahead of time if I get emotional because um, he was my first and only biology professor at El Paso Community College. Um, he saw something in me that others didn't and he encouraged me to apply for research. Now, as I mentioned, I had absolutely no idea what research was. I was like, can I get paid? That was my biggest question for him. Can I get paid doing this? Because my family cannot afford to help me pay for college and I need uh, a source of income. And he said, yes. Nick was the ultimate mentor. He was tough when he needed to be kind almost always. And I say almost because he would yell at you when you needed to be yelled at. And he looked out for each and every one of us who were part of the bridges to the baccalaureate as if we were own, his own kids. I get emotional today because Nick passed away a year ago from complications of COVID. He had just been re uh, diagnosed with leukemia and his body couldn't fight back. Nick guided me to apply for many research experiences, including the experiences that you'll see here. One of the first experiences that I had was researching monarch butterflies. And I thought through the bridges to the baccalaureate program, well, I'm gonna do research at, at UTEP. I'm gonna begin my career there at the University of Texas, El Paso. Um, and I'm gonna study butterfly migration. Again, absolutely no clue what that actually meant, um, except that I would get paid and that uh, this would potentially look good for whatever the next step of my career would be. What I learned is that research is a broad term um, and that research can look like anything you want it to be. You can be in the field like I was chasing butterflies. Um, I don't have this picture in a digital form, but uh, I do have a picture of me chasing butterflies with a butterfly net, which looks absolutely ridiculous. Um, or uh, you can go uh, look at ant behavior and see how these specific ants, these Solenopsis ants, which just means uh, big head ants um, actually live within the soil until their soil communities and help uh, within their communities uh, bring in new vibrant diverse methods of cultivation of foods. Uh, you can also go on field trips and go trapping um, and you can also uh, take them back to the lab and look at them under the microscope or you can be in the lab doing yeast genetics like I did at the University of Pennsylvania and one of my own research mentored experiences. Or you could be looking at the immune reaction, uh, the human immune reaction and the mouse immune reaction to malaria, as you see here in the middle, um, as I did with one of my internships at NYU. Now, all of these experiences were incredible, but I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I still wasn't sure if I should keep going. Um, but what I did learn from my mentor research experience is that I, I gained confidence. I was able to speak to folks, to have conversations about the research I was doing. Um, I was able to continue to pursue my uh, undergraduate degree or my bachelor degree in biology like I had hoped. And I knew that I had a set of skills, um, not only within my academics, but in research that could take me farther than I could have ever imagined. Um, I knew that as a student that went uh, into internship programs that I was, or undergraduate research experiences, that I was getting my foot in the door. Um, and it was Nick, that first mentor that I had that said, don't uh, let go of these people. Don't let go of the people that you meet. Um, and it was through these mentored research experiences that I got to get to know Saknas for the first time. 
In 2003, I was able to present a poster about my research experience uh, looking at monarch butterfly migration at SACNAS. It was SACNAS in Anaheim, and I'll never forget it. It was tiny, it was a small space. There weren't a lot of students available uh, to talk to. Uh, all of the faculty seemed really, really smart. And I wasn't sure that this was gonna be a place where I could find a mentor. Um, little did I know that this was gonna be the place where I found every single mentor that I've had um, pretty much since I started my career. And SACNAS has been a space where I've been able to grow and see others grow. I've been able to meet amazing people like Dr. Traeger. I've been able to go through leadership institutes like the SACNAS uh, Linton Pudry um, Leadership Institute for uh, postdoctoral uh, folks um, and was able to learn what the real value of mentoring has been for me. Now, it was at SACNAS where I got to meet a couple of different folks. Um, I got to meet Deborah Stock, who was serving as a program director for the NYU School of Medicine Sackler Institute. Um, and she guided me into applying to these subsequent in, uh, internships. Um, she also was the one that helped me. She and another faculty member, Dr. Joel Oppenheim, were the ones that helped me identify which graduate programs I would apply to. I ended up attending and completing my doctoral work at the NYU School of Medicine Sackler Institute in medical and molecular parasitology. Now, every time I say that to somebody, they say parapsychology? No, parasitology, which is the study of parasites. Um, it was here that I found my love and interest in infectious diseases um, that continues to this day. SACNAS was the first place that I learned about graduate programs and gained mentors, as I mentioned, Debbie Stock and Joel Oppenheim, who guided me um, through my graduate work at NYU. I was able to complete my doctoral work in just under five years, something that I didn't expect to happen and that I certainly, uh, that I think my family certain, certainly didn't think would happen so quickly. Now, once I completed my uh, doctoral degree, I again was very unsure of what I was going to do. I wasn't sure whether I should stay in academia, should I go into biotech, uh, should I do something completely different? I became interested very heavily in teaching while I was a graduate student um, and decided actually to go back to El Paso for a little over a year and taught at El Paso Community College. I taught alongside Nick, who was still working on his doctoral degree. Um, and we got to call each other doctor, which was just such a beautiful experience. Um, I was able to then uh, also teach at the high school that I graduated from. Now, if you're not from the El Paso region, you're probably thinking, oh, there's only like two high schools. No, there's about 40. But I was lucky enough to uh, be able to go back to El Paso and serve my community. And that was certainly something that I learned both at El Paso Community College and through SACNAS, that your familia matters, that your community matters, that you're giving back to your community in meaningful ways matters. And so I was able to go back and teach in both of those places um, and I had Nick as a mentor and Joel and Debbie saying, what's the next step? What are you going to do from here? Uh, you can't teach high school forever, which honestly, I think I might have enjoyed that. Um, but they said, you have to keep going. You have a responsibility to keep going. Um, and so I did. I actually ended, going, ended up going to yet another SACNAS conference where I got to meet folks that were leading um, IRACTA programs. So institutional research and uh, career development awards uh, and was able to join as a postdoctoral fellow, um, uh, one of the laboratories at Northwestern School of Medicine in Chicago, uh, where I continued my postdoctoral fellowship studying Legionnaire's disease, uh, which is caused by a bacterial pathogen. So I continued on this idea of studying at diseases and pathogens 
Um, and more importantly, I was able to work at Northeastern Illinois University, um, learning to teach under the guidance of Dr. Pamela Guedes, who is also a proud SACNAS member. It was her guidance that really led me to uh, want to work at Hispanic serving institutions. And I want to specifically serve minoritized students at Hispanic serving institutions. So this led me to my current role at California Lutheran University, um, where I now am a mentor, a faculty member, and I'm a staunch advocate for anti-racist policy development. Um, what I've learned throughout my time and throughout uh, my experiences uh, at the small liberal arts college um, is that uh, one of our uh, mandates, one of our uh, really important pieces of moving forward as people is that um, it is really important that we continue to mentor others. I know that without my mentors, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so in my current role, I'm a strong and passionate advocate for DACA student and DACA student rights, for the rights of students of color and the development of anti-racist policies within our own institution. And I see it as my job and role in this world to ensure that we have the same, that we all have the same opportunities to succeed. And that students uh, like Patricia, who is pictured here at SACNAS in Hawaii in 2019, get to follow their dreams, to get to follow their own path and to make their own way, just like the monarch butterfly does from the mountains of Michoacan to Southern Canada. Now, what is your mandate as students? Your stu as students, it is your job to know and feel that you belong, to use your ventajas or your assets to keep you moving forward, to help you navigate all of these different landscapes and to help you um, continue your careers and be as successful as you want to be. And success is not defined by your mentors. Success is not defined by your faculty members or your staff members, or even the folks here at SACNAS. It is defined by you. It is your job as students to find those supporters, those mentors that are gonna help guide you um, and engage in self-care. Uh, right now we're in the middle of many pandemics. We're in the middle of a racism pandemic and we're in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic. Find time to take care of you, to engage with your familia, uh, whether it's chosen or given, um, and to say yes when doors open and to knock when those doors haven't opened yet. For those of you who are faculty and staff on this call, I want you to take the following charges. I challenge you to take the following charges. Learn to create anti-racist environments. If you're not yet familiar with these terms, start to educate yourself. Make sure that you listen to your students and that you're comfortable with discomfort so that you are able to better serve as that is our role as mentors and guides and teachers. And it is also our role to help build resources. Now, I say this because the number of students that are going through our, our uh, academic pipelines, obtaining um, degrees within the sciences is not where it needs to be quite yet. We're still losing so many students and as faculty and staff, we have a responsibility to continue helping them move forward. Now, what's next in my journey is yet to be determined. And what is next on your journey as students is yet to be written. So I encourage you to heed the advice of the folks that you'll hear from today. Find some mentors, make some networks, uh, learn to live within this space um, and use your ventajas not to become somebody different, but to be uh, the fullest self that you can be. You are such an important and valuable part of our academic world. 
you as students and everything that you bring with you um, are the reason that we are here. Um, use those ventajas, those assets, that familia to lean on, to move, continue to move forward, to continue to pull up as you climb. I will continue to try to do my own job in pulling up and pulling as I climb. And I will do so with my niece and my two nephews who were pictured here a year ago, um, who are now very much convinced that they will also be scientists, that they will also be researchers, um, and that they will change the world as I'm sure you will too. I want to leave you with two thoughts is that Black lives matter and we need to make that a priority for us within education and that our dreamer students, our DACA students deserve a path to continue to strive and continue to contribute uh, to our beautiful communities. And so with that, I want to thank you for your time. My dog Riley also thanks you for your time and wishes you the best as you go through today and hear uh, from so many wonderful individuals who really are here uh, to support you, love you and mentor you and help you become part of this SACNAS familia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vargas for sharing your journey, experience, your family with us and calls for action today.